Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the Federal Unemployment Tax Act or known as FUTA. Now you cannot talk about FUTA without discussing its sister or its daughter, SUTA. SUTA is the state, state unemployment tax act. Why are they related? Well, they are related because when you lose your job, for a fault that's not your own, you'll be able to collect money from an insurance program, state insurance program, for a period of time. Well, that state insurance program is called SURA, but FURA is what administers SURA, and we'll see what does that mean in a moment. But this is the basic idea. So when I get unemployed, where, did that, where does that money come from? We'll talk about that. But before we start, I will need to remind you that if you are an accounting student or CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I can be a useful addition explaining the material differently. You can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam. Your risk is one month of subscription, your potential return. If you give me a try, pass in the CPA exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university is doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other college and universities as well. If you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Please like this recording, share it with others. It doesn't cost you anything. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So what is the Federal Unemployment Tax Act is all about? Well, each state, now we're going to go from federal to state. So notice that's why I said we have to talk about the state, is required to have an unemployment compensation program. Simply put, if you lose your job, you'll be able to collect. It's a social safety net. Now, the federal government administered the program, and this program started as part of the Social Security Act of 1935. So in a sense, it's also FICA is also part of the Social Security Act. So it's all part when the government was trying to get the country out of the Great Depression, trying to create those social net. Now, the first thing you want to know about this program is employers, the company, employers means the company, fund this program. The company pays into this program, not the employee. Now, put a small asterisk here to remind you that in some states, and Pennsylvania, which is my state, one of them, you pay a small amount, a very small amount of your paycheck to that program. But generally speaking, the employer, your company funded this program, so it doesn't come out of your paycheck. When would your employer have to fund this program? Well, as long as you're not a farm worker or a household worker, you are subject to FICA. If the company either have one of the criteria, one of them, paid wages of 1500 or more in any calendar quarter in the current or preceding year, now you, you, know, you have FUTA to worry about, or you had one or more employees, okay, for at least some part of the day, one or more employees in any of the 20 or more different weeks, either in 2019 or 2020. The reason I'm specifying the years because I'm doing this recording in 2021. So it gives you an idea what we are discussing. But the point is this would apply to any future years. Now, how much would the employer have to pay? So what is the employer share? What's the employer expense? Well, here we go. The rate is 6.0%. Okay, this is the FUTA rate. This is the FUTA rate. Uh, wages up to $7,000. Simply put, let's assume you get paid uh, $2,000 a month to make it easy. We have January, February, March, and April. So the first month you got paid $2,000 per month. The following month you got paid $2,000 per month. The third month you were paid $2,000. And in April you were paid $2,000. So notice what's going to happen. The first $2,000 you're subject to FUTA. Why? Because you did not reach 7,000. The next 2,000, you also are responsible for FUTA. The employer, when I say responsible, the employer is responsible for paying FUTA because the employee did not reach 7,000. March, the employee already paid 6,000. They still pay FUTA. In April, the employee got, they got paid 2,000. They paid the employee 2,000. 1,000 will be subject to FUTA of that 2000 because this one additional 1000 will make a total of 7000 and the other 1000 will be food free and any future payment on, uh, for this employee will not require the company to make any FUTA payment for the rest of the year. Now, if this individual switch companies, then the other company will start to pay FUTA again, but I would assume with one company, assuming you are working with one company. This is what we what I mean by 
wages up to 7,000. So only the, se the first $7,000 are subject to wages. And what's the rate? 6%, Six, but don't worry, we're gonna change this rate in a moment. Let's assume the company pays their state rate. Remember, there is a FUDA rate and there's a SUTA rate, which is we don't care about the SUTA rate because the SUTA rate is different for each state. This is a state. Now you pay the federal, you're supposed to pay the federal government 6%. But if you pay your SUTA, which is your state unemployment rate, then if you if you do if you do pay it on time, if you make your payment on time and you are considered to be in good standing, then guess what? The six percent, the federal government would say we're gonna forgive you by five point four. So simply put, your net rate for food for for FUTA is 0.6 percent. So this is your net rate for FUTA, 0.6 percent. Now, what happens if you are late? So, in other words, if you are not in good standing, you are you, you, you are submitting your deposit late to the state government. Well, guess what? Then your credit is limited to 10% of the amount of deposit that would have been have given a credit. So, simply put, if you don't make your payment to the state properly, then the federal government will not give you the full 5.4%. The full They're going to take away some of that. They're going to take 10% of the credit. Now, let's take a look at an example to see how this works. Um, Adam Company has a state wages of 100000 that are subject to SURA, but did not make timely deposit for SURA. So Adam is not in good standing with the state. Okay, what's going to happen is this. Adam will say, okay, my federal rate is... 100,000 times 6%, that's 6,000. Then what's gonna happen is this. I'm gonna lose 90% of my rate. Well, my my credit is 5.4. This is this is what the federal government is gonna give me. I'm gonna be losing, I'm gonna be losing 9%. So I'm gonna be keeping 90%. So let's find out what that rate is. So let's get the calculator. So if I take 5.4. Well, uh, let's do it percentage point five zero five four times point nine. What's left is four point eight six, four point eight six percent. So re rather than getting a credit of five point four, the federal government it's going to give me a credit of four point five six. Okay, so less ninety percent of the credit, so four thousand eight hundred and sixty. So what I'm going to pay FURA now is one thousand one hundred and uh, one thousand one hundred and forty dollars this is what this is what i'm gonna have to pay food for now let's assume i made my payment on time if i made my payment on time i'm gonna only pay 600 which is 100 000 times 0. 0.6 so this is 0. 0.6 point zero zero six this is six percent so don't confuse 0. 0.6 with six percent okay don't confuse 0. 0.6 with six percent Okay, so this is what I end up paying. Uh, I end up paying Adam Company because they're not in good standing. They end up paying 1,110. Now we can compute, if you want to go a little bit further, you can compute what, what was their, really what was their rate, what was their FUTA rate, the, what was their FUTA net rate, 11, 1,140 divided by 100,000. They end up paying 1.14%. So the, the, the rate is 1.14% which is if they paid on time, it would have been 0.6. It's it. very simple. You're not making your payment. The federal government, it's not gonna be it's not, it's not gonna be nice to you. If you're not making the payment to your state, and the state will tell the federal government, by the way. And anyway, on the form, they will they will ask you whether you are in good standing or not. And I used to do these forms again. Just like I, I told you, I used to do a lot of nine, uh, 941 for FICA. FUTA is the same concept. Well, you have if, you, if you're doing 940, you have to do 941. If you're doing 941, you have to do 940. They're both, they, you know, if you have a company that you are paying social security, you're going to have unemployment tax as well. So I'm, I used to be very familiar with those forms. Let, 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 let me make myself clear because I haven't completed those forms over 10 years but they're practically still the same, okay? FUDA are deposited quarterly with an authorized depository if the tax is for a quarter, usually put them in a bank account, um, plus undeposited taxes for, uh, from the prior quarter exceeds $500. Then you can submit your payment on EFTPS. We looked at the EFTPS briefly in the prior recording. It's basically, it's a treasury website where you can make your payment. You can make the payment for FICA, SS, uh, FICA SS, FICA Medicare, Federal, 
and you could also make your FURA payment using the EFTPS, but you have to be very careful. You have to specify that you are paying for FURA. The employer must record that the tax paid is for FURA and indicate the quarter to which the payment applies. You have to tell the EFTPS, otherwise they will take your money and they will assume it's for your 941 for FICA. Okay, so you have to tell them exactly. When is the deposit due? The deposit is due no later than the last day of the month following the end of the quarter following the end of the quarter. Now let's take a look at an actual 940 form, which is an annual federal unemployment. So at the end of the year, you have to fill out the annual federal unemployment. There's a mistake here. We'll talk about it in a moment. Let's assume Boom Company, this is their address, had three employees who were paid the following amount during 2020. And we're gonna see the amount. Assume that Boom stay, pay state unemployment as entitled to the maximum credit of 5.4. It means they are in good standing. Therefore, their federal unemployment rate is 0.6. And this is the data that we are giving. Theodore was paid 3,000. Ursula was paid 28 and Vanessa 51. Now, the first thing we have to do, we have to add their total payments. That's what they're asking us first. Calculate the total payments. The total payments, if I added them correctly, and I did add them correctly, they differ from what's on the form. So if we take, um, if we take, let me see, uh, this is uh, 31, 31, it's 82,000. So the total wages, this should be 82,000. Payment exempt from FUDA, or there's no payment exempt from FUDA now. Uh, if there's any fringe benefit, anything like this, we're gonna assume nothing. Total payment made to each employee in excess of 7,000. Now you have to compute this line five and this is not tricky you have to know how to compute it remember only the first seven thousand are subject to are subject to fura so simply put theodore the whole three thousand is subject to fura ursella she was paid twenty eight thousand remember of this amount only seven thousand is subject to fura twenty one thousand is not subject to fura so those are payments made in excess of seven thousand for ursella it's twenty one thousand for ursella for Vanessa, she was paid 51,000. We have to take out 7,000. 7, 51 minus 7 is 44. Again, 44 for Vanessa, not subject to social security, to, to FUDA. So 21 plus 44 equal to 65. And this is where this number 65 coming from. So you paid in total 82,000 in wages, 65,000 of those, 65,000 of those 82,000 are not subject to FUDA because they're in excess of 7,000. So notice Theodore because they were only paid 3,000. All Theodore's wages were subject to FUDA. Now subtotal line four, five, six, we only have number in line five, that's 65,000. Now uh, taxable FUDA wages will take the total minus 65 will give us 17. So those are the wages subject to FURA. We're going to multiply this by 0 0.006, which is the rate, and you have a bill of $102 for FURA. There's going to be no adjustments. Total FURA adjustments, there's no adjustments. Your payment, uh, total FURA after adjustments is 102 and balance due. Let's assume you made no deposits. Balance due is 102. Therefore, you have to fill out a form. I believe it's called V940, V940. You could send it or you can go to EFTPS and make the payment, make the payment. So this is basically how FUTA work. Remember, it's no later than January 1st, this form is due, which is a month after year end. You remember, this is an annual federal unemployment form. This is just an informational form. Again, at the end of this recording, I strongly suggest you visit farhatlectures.com if you are an accounting student or CPA candidate, as I have, I, as I have material for many courses, not just this course. Also, if you're studying for your CPA exam, I don't replace your CPA review course. I can be an alternative explanation, a backup explanation. Study hard, good luck, and most importantly, stay safe.